Hello my dear students. Uh, welcome to my channel Physics by GRB sir. In this class, I am going to teach you some important aspects of the Coulomb's law. In your textbook, there are 8 aspects are given in which the first one is the statement of the Coulomb's law. So, according to the Coulomb's law, the force of attraction or repulsion between any two point charge is uh, directly proportional to product of magnitude of the charges and inversely proportional to square of the distance between them. And uh, the proportionality constant is k and the constant value is 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught. And you know that the epsilon naught is the permittivity of the free space or vacuum and its value is 8.85 into 10 power minus 12 c square n power minus 1 m power minus 2. And in a second uh, point, so in a previous uh, video, we discussed the Coulomb's law in vector form. So you just uh, remember uh, these uh, two figures. So in this figure, the force uh, F21 vector and the force uh, F12 vector always lies along the line joining the two charges. The force F21 vector and F12 vector always lies along the line joining of the two charges and their corresponding unit vectors are R12 cap and R21 cap. The magnitude, the unit vectors are same actually but acting in opposite direction. So that's what uh, we can say the R21 cap which is equal to minus R12 cap. Right. So in a third point the k value which is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught and uh, if you substitute epsilon naught uh, value in this uh, expression we are getting k value which is um, equal to 9 into 10 power 9 and uh, its uh, unit is a uh, newton meter square c power minus 2 okay sir value is uh, okay then uh, how to derive the unit so it is a very simple uh, my dear students so in order to derive the unit of k you just uh, uh, take the coulomb's law so, F which is equal to K into Q1 Q2 divided by R square, right. Then the, uh, we want to uh, derive the unit of K. So, that's what uh, K which is equal to F R square divided by Q1 Q2. Well, the SI unit of the force is Newton. The SI unit of or the distance is meter. So, here is R square. So, that's what meter square, right. The SI unit of the charge is Coulomb in denominator Q1, Q2 is there. Therefore, Coulomb into Coulomb, Coulomb square, take it into the numerator. So, Coulomb power minus 2. So, it is the SI unit for the K. Right. Then, uh, epsilon naught. So, from this uh, K expression, then uh, we can write epsilon naught which is equal to 1 divided by 4 pi K. Then the unit of uh, epsilon naught is c square n power minus 1 m power minus 2. So how to get this uh, unit? It is a uh, very simple uh, my dear students. The reciprocal unit of k is equal to unit of epsilon naught. Isn't it? So see here. So epsilon naught and k. So both are inversely proportional. So you just uh, make the reciprocal of the k unit and you will get the unit for the epsilon naught. Right. And the fourth uh, very important aspect is, I am going to ask you a question. Can we use a uh, one coulomb of uh, charge at a one meter distance uh, practically? So in order to answer for this question, you have to uh, take the coulomb's law. So this expression is f is equal to k q1 q2 divided by r square. And uh, you know the value of k that is a 9 into 10 power 9. And uh, the charge value, I mean Q1 value is a given 1 coulomb and Q2 value is also 1 coulomb and distance between them is a 1 meter. You substitute everything and uh, you are getting F which is equal to 9 into 10 power 9 Newton. So actually it is a very huge uh, force uh, dear students. It is not a uh, normal force. So it is a very 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 huge for you. Just look at the power 10 power 9. So uh, it is uh, at least... Um, approximately 1 million ton um, force this one 
இப்போ நம்ம சூர்யா படத்தில் அதாவது சிங்கம் படத்தில் வந்து சூர்யா ஒரு டைலாக் பேசியிருப்பார் நான் ஓங்கி அடித்தா ஒன்றரை டன்னு வெயிட்டு பார்க்குறியா பார்க்குறியா அப்படின்னு சொல்லிட்டு வெறித்தனமாக ஒன்று டைலாக் பேசியிருப்பார் அதாவது சூர்யா ஓங்கி அடித்தா ஒன்றரை டன் வெயிட்டு தான் பட் இங்கே இருக்கக்கூடிய ஃபோர்ஸ் பார்த்திங்கன்னா கிட்டத்தட்ட ஒன் மில்லியன் டன் ஃபோர்ஸ் ஸோ இட் இஸ் அ வெரி வெரி ஹியூஜ் ஃபோர்ஸ் இன் அ மெனி எலக்ட்ரிக்கல் ஃபினாமினா இன் அ டே டு டே லைஃப் வி ஆர் யூஸிங் just a uh, one micro coulomb or one nano coulomb of the forces so we can't uh, use a uh, one coulomb or two coulomb of the forces uh, practically because it will produce a very huge force right in our point number 5 in vacuum the electrostatic force is f21 vector which is equal to 1 by 4 by epsilon not into q1 q2 divided by r square r1 to cap already i taught you how to make this um, expression already you know that in previous video i we discussed and where epsilon not is permittivity of the vacuum suppose the two point charges are placed in medium medium uh, maybe medium is a water or oil anything else right suppose uh, the two point charges are placed in medium then the equation number 1 will become like f21 vector which is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon q1 q2 divided by r square r1 to cap so here there is a small change i have substituted epsilon instead of the epsilon not because epsilon not is permittivity of the vacuum and epsilon is permittivity of the medium and you have to always remember that the epsilon value will always a greater than epsilon not so that's what the electrostatic of force in medium will always a uh, less than the electrostatic uh, force between the two point charge in vacuum right so it is a very important uh, sir why uh, the electrostatic uh, force in medium is less than in vacuum because see the epsilon and uh, force so both are uh, inversely proportional to each other so whenever the epsilon value increases then the electrostatic uh, force will decrease so that's what f vector medium less than f vector in vacuum right so i am going to derive another one parameter that is a relative permittivity for a medium the notation for the relative permittivity is epsilon r epsilon r is the notation for the relative permittivity and it is defined as the ratio of permittivity of the medium to the permittivity of the vacuum so therefore epsilon which is equal to epsilon r into epsilon not right so now you just substitute epsilon value in equation number 2 where it is equation number 2 yes so here uh, we are having so here uh, there is a uh, epsilon so you just substitute epsilon which is equal to epsilon r into epsilon not so therefore the equation number 2 becomes f21 vector which is equal to 1 divided by 4 pi epsilon not epsilon r into q1 q2 divided by r square r1 to cap well so for the f the epsilon r value is equal to 1 for any other medium the epsilon r value will be equal to greater than 1 for an example for the water the relative permittivity is equal to 80 well so in order to uh, understand this uh, concept i am going to tell you an example to understand the variation of electrostatic uh, force in vacuum and in medium see students uh, you just uh, consider uh, there are uh, two point charges initially placed in vacuum and uh, the electrostatic uh, force between them is 80 newton for an example i am telling okay right suppose uh, this arrangement if we place in to the water then uh, how much of electrostatic uh, force uh, will be arise to between them it is the question right see uh, in vacuum the electrostatic uh, force to calculate the electrostatic force uh, we have the formula f1 vector which is equal to 1 divided by 4 pi epsilon not q1 q2 divided by r square r1 to cap epsilon r will not come where in vacuum right but uh, in medium epsilon r will come i mean in denominator of this expression so therefore um, i can uh, write i can make one uh, expression like this so in order to calculate uh, the electrostatic force between the two point charges in water 
f w which is equal to f divided by epsilon r right so f w which is equal to so what is the electrostatic force in vacuum given a t divided by epsilon r and what is the epsilon r value so a t divided by a t which is equal to 1 newton right which is equal to 1 newton right so the electrostatic force is 80 times decreased whenever the two point charges are placed in water i hope that you and uh, you are able to understand uh, this uh, video my students right and the sixth point is the difference between coulomb's law and uh, gravitational law so according to the coulomb's law the force of attraction or repulsion between two point charges is uh, directly proportional to magnitude of product of the charges and inversely proportional to square of the distance between them right and the uh, gravitational force of attraction between two objects is uh, directly proportional to product of the masses and inversely proportional to square of the distance between them. So this expression you studied in your 11th standard gravitational lesson. Right. And um, the next difference is the proportionality constant in a Coulomb's law is K. Which uh, its value is 9 into 10 power 9 Newton meter square C power minus 2. So the gravitational constant is G and uh, its value is 6.626 into 10 power minus 11 Newton meter square kg power minus 2. Right. And look at the powers. So in uh, Coulomb's law, the power is 10 power 9. In gravitational uh, constant, the power is uh, 10 power minus 11. So therefore, the K value is uh, very very greater than G or otherwise we can say the G, L, G value is uh, very very less than to the K. Right. And uh, the Coulomb's uh, uh, electrostatic uh, force may be attractive or otherwise uh, repulsive. Suppose that the two point charges are like charges means uh, there will be a repulsive force. Suppose the point charges are unlike charges means uh, there will be a attractive force. But uh, in a, a gravitational law, the force of uh, the force between the two objects will always be attractive. And uh, the Coulomb's electrostatic force actually depends on the medium. So a few minutes ago, I explained to you how the uh, force uh, between the point charges are getting varied uh, in uh, vacuum and in water. So the Coulomb force actually depends on medium. But uh, the gravitational force is uh, independent of the medium. So whatever may be the medium, the gravitational force of attraction between the two objects uh, will not uh, change. Right. And uh, the last point is, so when the charges are rest, there will be only a Coulomb force. When charges are rest, there will be only Coulomb force. Suppose the charges are moving, a Lorentz force will come into the play in addition to the Coulomb force. Sir, what is mean by Lorentz force? I will explain when I teach uh, lesson number 3. It is a very, very interesting concept of uh, the Lorentz force. But uh, in a gravitational force uh, between the two objects is uh, same when uh, they are uh, rest or in motion. Same force. The gravitational force between two objects is uh, same uh, when the object uh, are uh, rest or in motion. So there is uh, no change uh, in uh, forces. So these are the major uh, differences between the Coulomb's law and uh, gravitational law and uh, the point number seven so already uh, we discussed the point number seven uh, in a previous video suppose if you have any doubt uh, you just uh, uh, watch again the previous video right and uh, the last two point is the Coulomb's law actually true only for the point charges 
but uh, the point charge uh, actually the yeah, ideal concept ideal concept in the sense uh, practically uh, we can't uh, have the point charges even though uh, we can apply this uh, law for charged objects for an example uh, it is on a sphere and the sphere is uh, positively charged it means uh, some positive charges may be available on the surface of the sphere and uh, it is another one sphere and uh, it is also positively charged and they are separated by a distance so practically we can have uh, like the situation a sphere uh, or a charged uh, um, a wire or a charged uh, plane seats um, so likewise uh, we can have uh, practically so i point charges are not uh, possible so that's what that is called uh, ideal charge so in this situation also we can uh, use the coulomb's law but the condition is uh, its uh, size should be very less than the distance between them the size of the object should be very uh, less than the distance uh, between them so it is the condition or otherwise uh, we can say uh, the distance between the two charged sphere is much greater than radii of the sphere we can say uh, like this right in fact um, coulomb discovered uh, his uh, law by considering the charged spheres in torsion balance as point charges only that's it my dear students so ungalku indha video pidichirundhuchuna like pannunga share pannunga marakama channel la subscribe pannunga thank you